chapter seven is called I'm Getting Married in the Morning. The hooligans mended the fat penguin and carried on with a fruitless short search for kamikaze for a day or so more, this time being very careful not to, <laughs> to camp on the island of the quiet life in a camping spot with loads of jellyfish, but no ghosts, berserks or ugly ducks. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Stoke the mast, then sent a carrier dragon to Big Booby Bertha with the sad news that they couldn't find kamikaze anywhere and they returned home to Berg. Ugly, ugly, ugly Perk hadn't said that he had to collect the honey all in his own. Good point. So Stoke the Vast decided that the chances of, of the quest to collect honey from the island of Berserk being successful would be greatly improved if all the warriors in the hooligan tribe joined take up in a midnight dragon raiding uh, ra raid, riding raid on the island. This is why the next e evening all 12 Vikings on the warrior tra training program were standing to attention in a raggedy line in front of Gobba the Belch who is the teacher in charge of the pirate training programme on Berg. Dressed in their black nighttime flying gear in front of the almost wood around Huge Hill, the highest point on Berg. Listen up, guys, roared Gobber the Belch, on account of young Hiccup here being a fiancé. Jeers and smoochy noises from the line. Hiccup a dentrum up a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, taunted to clueless and ignorant young bruiser with ears that stuck out like a jug. Hey, Hiccup, what's it like to be in love? Stayed tough like Junior. Your eyes are like two pools of green. Your hair's the reddest I've ever seen. Chanted Speedy Fist. <laughs> Everybody roared with laughter as Hiccup turned blood scarlet. That's not that saying. Hiccup and tantrum up a tree. I don't see why we all have to risk our life just because the useless is weak enough to fall in love. Sneezed not out. He should be ashamed of himself, racing poetry that soppy, and his poetry is pants. Silence, yo gobber. This is a good chance to practice your dragon riding skills. Um, stopped loud. Now, Berserk is one of the most dangerous places in the archipelago because Berserks are the most terrifying warriors in the world. We must avoid capture at all costs. So you'll be riding your dragon at speed in the darkness while trying to avoid trees. Not as easy as it sounds. The young warriors hadn't been dragon riding in the air for long. Dragon riding is a very complicated skill. It has to be learned in stages. You had to learn not only to direct your dragon to the left and right, but also up and down vertically through the air, often at extraordinary speed. Dragons are such magnificent flyers that it takes years to master gliding, diving, flying backwards, flying in formation, looping loop, and all the other aer aeronautic stunts that a dragon performs naturally in the wild. Now, Rod Gobber, this is a training exercise. I have hung gourds from trees to represent honey that you have to collect. You have to weave through the trees, collecting as much honey as you can, and then return here to the finishing line. Meanwhile, I will be pretending to be a poison-darting scarer come berserk. Nice disguise, sir, said Fishlegs. Thank you, Fishlegs, said Gobba. Gobba the Belch's berserk disguise consisted of covering himself in war paint and putting a large pair of his own very underpants on his head. He was carrying a bow loaded with arrows tipped with sticky blue woad. Now, oh, wait, hang on, just look, 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 look at him with his underpants on his head. Look at everybody's laughing. Ah. <laughs> uh, now, said Gobba, frowning pompously, I'll catch um, If I catch you, or if you get hit by one of these arrows, you consider yourself deader than dodos if you're in a real-life berserk honey-collecting situation. <laughs> he cleared his throat. Onto your dragons, roared to Gobba the Welch. Hiccup's riding dragon was an anxious, untidy windwalker with raggedy ears and even more raggedy wings. Tooth has got a t tummy ache, whined Toothless. He was looking a little green around the face, greener around the face than normal. But of course, it was quite difficult to tell because he was as green as the green, green grass already. And he had just done five cartwheels in the air in the road because he was feeling a little bored, what with all the talking going on. Well, stop doing somersaults then, Hiccup suggested. They're talking in Dragonese. Go! roared Gobbo, blasting on his horn. Hiccup did all right in the exercise. The windwalker was a little clumsy, but very fast at flying through the trees. Poor old fish legs had some difficulties. His chicken poxer was a cross little thing and raced around all the time, trying to buck fish legs off. Not to mention the fact that fish legs was allergic to it, so kept sneezing furiously. 
And then Gobber, who was really enjoying himself, his red pot pie face, screaming like a banshee underneath those ridiculous furry, furry underpants, sneaked up behind Fishlegs and let out an ear splitting, rib cracking, head ringing howl that would have done credit to a real poison dart, a scare or all berserk. Hey! Screeched Fishlegs and the cross, written with a cross little Shetland pony snort, the chicken poxer careered wildly out of control through the almost wood ploughing through branches, narrowly avoiding bushes and completely flat, flattening a tender young ruin tree that had survived the great storm by a whisker and eventually turned it charging headfirst splat into the trunk of a really quite sturdy oak, like a small apoplectic suicidal rhino. Luckily, chicken boxers have heads built like crash helmets. So all that happened to the chicken boxer was that he had, he saw a few stars. Meanwhile, fish legs sailed over the top of the chicken box and heads, bonked his own head on the tree and then swung upside down from the safety loop on the middle. Hang on, those are the arrows, by the way, that they use. You see, their training arrows have got um, uh, ends on, which means that they don't, they're not like real arrows. Um, who went on, his chicken boxer, boxer, who went on flying distractedly through the air like a drunken moth. Gobble the Belch caught up with them, yelling at the top of his bellow, and tactfully added insult to injury by shooting fish legs with arrows from his ankles to the tip of the lump on his head. There's fish legs, swaying upside down, covered in arrows, which have got those helpful self safety tips. That means I've hit you 18 times over, fish legs, yelled Gobble the Belch joyfully. You'll have to do better than that, boy, he bellowed before whirling down around on his dragon and shot after. And he shot after his tough nut junior, who swerved neatly through a copse of alders as if he was slaloming on skis. <laughs> Several not very sensitive young hooligans in training pulled up their dragons and stopped to laugh at poor fish legs swinging from the chicken boxer's saddle. It was, of course, highly amusing, since fish legs was dangling head <laughs> down nearly 30 feet up in the air, but it was also a tad dangerous. <laughs> so Hiccup gave the reins of the windwalker a shake and swooped down and caught him just as his foot slipped out of the safety loop. Hiccup flew fish legs down to the ground in safety, but fish legs had a recurring problem. His berserk tendencies often to get ticked, kicked in when he was angry. When he was hit on the head, it exaggerated the problem. And that was what happened now. So instead of thanking Hiccup, fish legs turned a bright shade of puce and jumped up and down in a wild shaking fury, uh, screaming insults up at the laughing boys and their dragons, which of course only Worried, Hiccup dismounted the windwalker and tried to calm Fishlegs down by taking him by the arm. Hang on there, Fishlegs! Which was a mistake, because Fishlegs turned on him and took shock off the arm in an extremity of rage, shouting, Will you stop interfering? I only interfered, said Hiccup soothing. You'd stop you falling 30 feet onto your head. We're always interfering! yelled Fishlegs. You interfered when you said you wrote those poems I spent ages writing. I did that so that ugly ugly dog wouldn't murder you on the spot, said Hiccup, really worried about Fishlegs now. Ha! The real reason is that you think I'm not good enough for a real princess, don't you, how fish legs? Hiccup opened his mouth to say that wasn't the real reason at all, but fish legs carried on, and you are because you are royal blood. And I'm just a nobody, aren't I? I'm just a nobody from nowhere with no parents who somebody found in the harbour. And so the idea that I might end up with a beautiful princess like Tantrum is a big joke, isn't it? The boys and their dragon certainly thought it was a big joke. It's not like those laughs so hardly nearly fell off his dragon. Um, so to gobble the belch, I think perhaps you ought to take Fishlegs home, Hiccup. He made his little lie down, take his dragon with you. And the others carried on practising, leaving Hiccup with the berserk Fishlegs. I do not need a little lie down, said Fishlegs, punching the air in a barking mag sort of way. I'm perfectly fine! That's right, Sooth Hiccup, but you've got a little bunk on the head and you've gone slightly berserk. And you'll feel much better after a little lie down. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. I do not need a little lie down, says Fishlegs. That's it, said Fishlegs, stopping suddenly, his mouth falling out open. Why didn't I think of this before? That's what I am. I'm a berserk. There he is, thinking I'm a berserk. Chapter 8 is called Who Are Fishlegs' Parents? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Have that tomorrow.